Sjogren's disease. Just pronouncing it is a challenge, much less understanding everything about it. It's often put into this, it's not so bad, come back every six months category in our rheumatology clinics, but more and more we are recognizing, well, how much we aren't recognizing about this condition. For many, Sjogren's disease is so much more than just having dry eyes, and that's what we're going to dig into today. We'll review some basics about Sjogren's, including a few updates since the last time I talked about this. We'll talk about all the symptoms outside the eye, and then put this into a framework you can take back to your doctors to make sure you're getting the most comprehensive care possible. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. I take care of a lot of conditions that no one has ever heard of, and Sjogren's is high amongst them. I often think of Sjogren's as a cousin to lupus, as like lupus, it is a systemic autoimmune condition, meaning it affects multiple areas and is a result of the immune system going haywire and attacking your own body. Also like lupus, Sjogren's is primarily seen in women, and specifically women in the peri or postmenopausal years. Yes, this implies sex hormones play a role in its development, but how? We don't know yet. And like with all my conditions, it may be seen more often in women, but can certainly be seen in men and in people of all ages. Making a diagnosis of Sjogren's can be reasonably straightforward if someone has the right autoantibody blood test. The anti-SSA or anti-Rho autoantibody, and by the way, these are just two names for the same autoantibody, is strongly associated with Sjogren's, as is the anti-SSB or anti-law antibody, only less so. The American American College of Rheumatology has put forth criteria for diagnosing Sjogren's, and although this is mainly used for clinical trials, it can be helpful for us in the clinic. This is a scoring system, so anyone with a four or higher is determined to have Sjogren's. I'm showing you this not because I think it's important to memorize, but to highlight how the most importance is given to the antibody test, as I mentioned, and the biopsy result. The blood test and biopsy, however, are imperfect, as not everyone will have a positive autoantibody blood test, and biopsies can sometimes miss the inflammation. Recently, there's been an interest in utilizing ultrasound to help make a diagnosis. But is this just a trend or can it actually be useful? Well, the jury is still out. But there's been research looking at what inflamed salivary glands look like under ultrasound and how we can stratify those changes to help us make a diagnosis. It also appears useful in proving the negative, meaning if someone does not have a positive anti-SSA antibody blood test and then has a normal normal salivary gland ultrasound, it's likely they don't have Sjogren's disease. Proving the negative may not sound that useful, but when you are facing a number of unclear symptoms and non-specific lab results, being able to effectively rule something out is gold. Because it's not standard of care yet, it's not always going to be easy to find. My first recommendation is to ask your rheumatologist if they or someone in their group works with ultrasound and specifically salivary gland ultrasound. If they don't, ask if anyone in town does. Your best bet will likely be at the closest academic medical center and it may be a rheumatologist, endocrinologist, or radiologist who performs the procedure. Like I said in the beginning, dry eyes and dry mouth are often the only symptoms that come to mind in patients and doctors when thinking about Sjogren's disease. But up to a third of those with Sjogren's will deal with more than just sicka symptoms. And when I say sicka symptoms, I'm talking about the symptoms of dry eye and dry mouth. Sicka symptoms are not the same thing as Sjogren's disease. Sicka symptoms are just that, they're symptoms, while Sjogren's is an entire disease entity. So what are the possible other symptoms? We're going to go through these in order of severity and frequency, roughly. As we move down the list and get to the more severe symptoms, just remember these are thankfully rare. So let's start with the joints. Joint problems are one of the unifying symptoms in almost all rheumatic autoimmune conditions, and Sjogren's is no different. Sjogren's patients can have joint pain and swelling, similar to what we see in rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, but they can also have joint pain without the swelling, like we may see in fibromyalgia. Muscle pain is also possible, and someone could have muscle pain without inflammation, like fibro, or muscle inflammation with weakness, like you may see in an autoimmune myositis, like dermatomyositis. Those with Sjogren's can also have a variety variety of skin rashes, hair loss, sensitivity to the sun, like we would see in lupus. The nervous system can be impacted by Sjogren's, and this is not always appreciated by doctors. So what are these possible nervous system symptoms? When it affects the peripheral nervous system, or the nerves of our body, we can have body pain, numbness, and tingling. And this can be similar to fibro. In more severe cases, we may also have a change in our ability to move our limbs. 
When it affects the central nervous system or our brain, we can have headaches or seizures, but thankfully this is rare. We can also see a number of changes in our blood work. For example, someone may have low platelets and if they get very low, they may develop bleeding problems. Sjogren's can also be associated with anemia and if severe enough, the anemia can lead to fatigue, chest pain, headaches, or shortness of breath. And we can't skip over the risk of lymphoma in Sjogren's. And for more on that, I recommend checking out this other video on Sjogren's I did. Some people may even find themselves dealing with lung or kidney issues related to their Sjogren's, similar to what you would see with scleroderma or lupus. So you can see that similar to most my other autoimmune conditions, Sjogren's disease can impact almost every system in the body. If you find yourself having any of the symptoms listed in, make sure to ask your doc, could this be related to my Sjogren's? Hey there, so I'm just jumping on real quick to let you know about something I've built that will get you answers faster. Your appointment home run handbook. I developed this after over 15 years of seeing thousands of autoimmune patients. This totally free handbook will help you think through your symptoms, your past experiences, and your family history so that you can walk into your appointment ready to tell your story and walk out confident in your plan. The best results my patients have had is when we are on the same team, and this is what I want for you and your doctor, which is why I've made this handbook totally free. You can find the link to get your free copy of your appointment home run handbook in the description box below. I and my fellow doctors are only as good as the information we have, and 90% of that information comes from you, so make it count. Thankfully, however, most people won't have to deal with these symptoms. So how can we tell who will? Do we have any ways of predicting if someone will have a more complex case of Sjogren's? Well, with 100% accuracy, no, not yet. But we do have some clues, and those clues are found mostly in our blood work. When first getting a diagnosis of Sjogren's, you will likely undergo a bunch of blood testing. We do that testing for two reasons. We want to look to see if there's any other evidence of another autoimmune disease, because remember, Sjogren's can often accompany other autoimmune conditions. And two, we're looking to evaluate for an active immunologic program. Profile. So what does that mean? It just means we're looking for evidence in your blood test that your immune system is really revved up. So what are the tests that will tell us that? Well, we've talked about the anti-SSA and anti-SSB autoantibodies, but we're also going to look for the rheumatoid factor, cryoglobulins, high immunoglobulins, high free light chain proteins, beta-2 microglobulins, low complements, and low lymphocytes. Ah, whoa, ah, that was a lot of technical lab jargon there. You do not need to know and understand the nuances of each of these labs, but suffice to say that there is a level of immunologic blood testing that you should have done, at least in some form, when first diagnosed with Sjogren's, as this will help us understand your risk of getting those more severe complications. And what do we do about it then? Well, if someone has an active immunologic profile or already is showing signs or symptoms, outside of just the glands, then we will think about treatment differently. Remember, we always wanna match the aggression of the treatment to the severity of the disease. So if someone just has sicka symptoms, then they probably just need sicka treatment. But if someone has evidence of significant disease outside of the salivary or lacrimal glands, then we have different treatments to consider from hydroxychloroquine to more potent chemo-like medications. So what can you look for and ask from your doctors to ensure that your Sjogren's is getting as complete care as possible. Do you have dry eyes and have been told that you have a positive ANA? Then it's time to see a specialist. Dry eye can happen in many autoimmune conditions and like I mentioned, Sjogren's can come alone or along with another autoimmune condition. So if this is you, start searching for and asking your doctor for a referral to a rheumatologist. Do you have Sjogren's and are still struggling with a bunch of unexplained symptoms? This can be so frustrating because your rheumatologist said they'd see you in six months and then your primary care doctor like doesn't know what to do. The symptoms of Sjogren's can be underappreciated and this is a scenario where the squeaky wheel does get the oil. Make a sooner than scheduled appointment with your rheumatologist specifically to discuss your symptoms and ask, could this be related to my Sjogren's? Also, it's a good time to review the blood work you've had done and see if there are any holes that need to be filled. Not everyone with Sjogren's is going to have all the blood work changes that I described, even those with symptoms outside the eyes. So I don't necessarily recommend walking in 
in demanding this blood work be tested, there's an art to deciding when and what needs to be tested. But it is a great opportunity to just discuss testing in general. Are there tests that could give some more information and help everyone better understand if your symptoms are related to Sjogren's? And the list I discussed is a good place to start. Sjogren's disease is a multi-system autoimmune disease that is more than just dry eyes. If you've been diagnosed with Sjogren's and have been feeling like crud and can't seem to figure out why, then it's time to take another look and see if there's more that can be done. If you are still learning what Sjogren's is and want to know how it affects the eye and more details on how we diagnose it, I recommend checking out this video on Sjogren's disease and this other one on dry eye. Both of the links will be down below. Thanks and we'll see you next time.